me, Kalpana Murparia, the head of uh, South and South Asia, is uh, with me here, as is uh, Jahangir Aziz, the chief economist, uh, emerging markets for JP Morgan. Kalpana, Jahangir, thank you very much for joining me. Kalpana, with your permission, I'm going to ask Jahangir first because there has been a fair amount of uh, consternation with uh, the CNBC TV 18 report that the Commerce Ministry wants uh, uh, the Indian rupee to be devalued, an unhappily chosen word, devalue, because this is uh, not a pegged currency. But uh, uh, what do you make of this statement, Jahangir? Uh, in the first place, is uh, the rupee overvalued vis-a-vis -vis trading partners is the rupee the reason why exports are doing badly look i mean let's let's start with the second question which is much easier to answer if you look at the look at every emerging market country there has been a massive decline in exports and this is not you know the last three four months it's been going on for the last five six years global trade has languished there are many reasons as to why that has happened and that has very little to do with currencies of each of the any of these countries so I, I don't think currencies has a role to play in determining whether or not the exports are going down or going up uh, I think it's much more to do with a global phenomenon we are going through a structural change it's a global structural change and we have to got to get used to it I think that's the bigger thing uh, that we have to get our policies and our reforms uh, in line with a world in which uh, the globalization led massive increase in trade that took place in the early 2000 till about 2008-9 that may not come back okay so uh, you, would, would you support, does the Commerce Ministry have a case to ask Reserve Bank at least not to stand in the way of, uh, uh, you know, rupee appreciation, I mean, or to stand in the way of rupee appreciation, not allow it to appreciate right. it? So, so many countries over the last 50 years have on and off tried using exchange rates to either keeping it undervalued. China is the one country that has always told that, you know, you kept exchange rate undervalued. Uh, the problem is that it always has unintended consequences and the unintended consequences of keeping your exchange undervalued are usually end up in tears. Uh, very few countries, in fact no country under the sun has actually managed to keep their exchange undervalued and come out unscathed. So I would think that's a dangerous you know, strategy to adopt if truly the Commerce Ministry is trying to do, adopt that. So I, I, and, and we, as I said, we don't really know whether that's the government's view or not. But it's it's a dangerous strategy to keep your exchange rate under Okay, uh, I'm sure that uh, view will be heard. Uh, but Kalpana, now for the larger takeaways from the conference, uh, uh, I, I noticed that uh, you know there are the best and the brightest, the deepest pockets were there listening to all your panels, uh, huge insurance pension funds. Uh, what is the sense you got? Uh, are they convinced about the India growth story? I mean. Export growth is not helping. The monsoons may be uh, less than what we thought uh, it would be. We are, we are given to understand it would be deficient. Is the story still intact or is it overstated? Certainly not overstated, Lata. I think consistently we are seeing a lot of excitement. Uh, as I've mentioned to you, this, we've made this uh, conference a little more broad-based in addition to equity investors and there are the dominant participants here we also have some fixed income and credit investors okay. here okay. and i think the entire credit bond story in india is just about to start there is continues to be a lot of excitement amongst the equity investors we had the finance minister earlier today uh, he did the inaugur inaugural speech and very candidly shared his views as you know until a few years ago or at least even a year ago people were all skeptical about whether the government will indeed ever get the gst done whether they'll ever indeed get the bankruptcy done the thing about us indians is once we get something done we always figure out some other way of being skeptical on how it will be executed i think i've heard the most succinct and thoughtful articulation on the path towards implementing gst within a very time short frame Okay. Oh, that's extremely positive uh, because this time around, as we discovered in our India Business Leader Awards, the government is prepared for April 1st and corporate India was making uh, deputations uh, to the ministry that, uh, you know, they may pr perhaps not have figured out uh, all angles. But, uh, okay, GST clearly is a story that's played out uh, much better than many of our skeptics uh, thought. But I'm, you know, you can, I, I can completely hijack this conversation because of the hint you're giving me on the credit markets and the credit investors. Uh, you know, 
the Reserve Bank has restricted large exposures in an incremental fashion. They are forcing good companies at least to go to the bond market. Do you really think that finally that elusive bond market is here? You know, the theory of constraints, Lata, works perfectly well in the world. If you are going to constrain the amount of money that you can really get from the banking sector, people are going to get forced into the corporate bond markets. And I thought Reserve Bank of India has also been very thoughtful. Whilst putting these caps, 25,000 crores going to 10,000 crores, they've also said that banks could credit enhance up to 50% yes. of these bond issuances. I think this is a perfect combination of getting liquidity from a set of investors who want access to longer term fixed income uh, securities and banks who are willing to take certain risk profile but obviously don't want to get burdened with the entire concentration. Okay. I definitely believe so. I also believe that the uh, dollar bond market has been very, very attractive. We've seen some single B companies with a variety of hedges uh, to manage their rupee exposure manage to access money, five-year money at 9%. That certainly won't have been the situation uh, in India. Yeah. So I think this entire debt story is going to be a very attractive story going mm -hmm. forward. Yeah, in India, of course, uh, the triple A's are now accessing the NCD market, the debenture market at 9.1. Yeah, I was talking about a single B international <laughs> company, which in our world would have been rated triple B. Okay, so there you are. Uh, the dollar bond market is de definitely very positive. But uh, just to get to the point which I was discussing with uh, Jahangir, uh, if this uh, fear of, uh, uh, you know, uh, enforced depreciation or resistance of appreciation were to get out, uh, do you think that this will become a stillborn market? You know, Lata, I don't believe we should go by comments that have been made, which may or may not have been made, may or may not have been interpreted rightly. Name me one instance in the last few years mm -hmm where India has done something idiotic. Whether it is the policy makers in, uh, on Min Street or indeed the finance ministry. We are all aware and proud, in fact we are all really proud of the way India managed the entire outpouring after the taper tantrum. Yes. We were known as the Fragile Five and my economist friends here all wrote a lot about the Fragile Five and you see how well we have steered that. On the one hand, if we are giving signals that we are here for stability, continuity, we want to attract foreign capital, which is a need of the day, to read this one comment is to say India is going to arbitrarily want to devalue its currency because it's going to see a sudden pop in exports to my mind does not sound right. Okay. Well, uh, maybe it was only a more marginal tweaking. So, I mean, you have to give credit to the Commerce Ministry for that as well. Surely they'll manage it. But, uh, uh, Kalpana, the other thing I wanted to ask you was uh, uh, the state of the banking system. Uh, do you think that now the corporate-facing banks uh, will start getting a look in? Do you think the hump is over? And more importantly, are they incrementally getting better? Are any of the investors you spoke to today interested in picking up di uh, distressed assets? So clearly I think the uh, advent of the Bankruptcy uh, Act and you know once we put all of the administrative measures in force is definitely going to help. The surface, the DRT, banks themselves saying enough is enough and therefore you know if you have a recalcitrant borrower who is unwilling to negotiate and be sensible they are really throwing everything that they can at him will definitely help. And any pickup that in demand, I know you talked about the monsoon tapering off, but just look at the data of last month in terms of the demand pickup that you've seen. Very recently, Sajid wrote a note in terms of what's happening in terms of the rural wages, etc. Yes. So demand is definitely picking up. And I feel if this momentum continues and we finally get the private sector coming into the investment phase, that will be a great thing. Okay. Well, I, I can't let you go without asking your comment on the banking system uh, itself. Uh, you were in active service up until, what, 2007? And now, you know, it's, what, uh, uh, seven years, uh, no, no, much more than that, okay. Nine years, Nine years since you were actively running a, the second largest uh, bank in the country. Uh, has the terrain changed so much? Do you think now uh, the public sector bank space will shrink a little faster? Not because just that they may, they may not grow, because so many licenses have been given, licenses are on tap, and the NBFC sector seems to be burgeoning. How does the sector look uh, then and now, and 
how will you extrapolate? Definitely, it's gotten much more competitive as it should be because despite everything, we are still a very underpenetrated market. Credit to GDP in India is one of the lowest amongst any emerging market as well. Even in terms of overall penetration of investment products, uh, liability products, indeed, there is a long way to go. At the same time, newer technologies are coming in for far greater reach uh, to the customers. The entire rollout of data is going to dramatically change the way banks remit money uh, and uh, distribute their products. So there's going to be a lot more competition. This is a huge market. We're talking about 1.2 billion people who need to be served. Okay. So banking sector, the way to go, uh, NBFC, small banks, private banks, uh, a whole host of them. Uh, but uh, uh, Jahangir, uh, you know, uh, I can't wind up this conversation without asking you something about the global economy. Mm -hmm. You know, I have been asking everyone, if, starting from Jamie Dimon to uh, Adrian Mowat, there is this fundamental contradiction in the global economy where there are negative yields and negative yields normally point to recession economies and you have you know all-time high valuations or near all-time high valuations for equities whether it is us or india is there an apocalypse around the corner when this contradiction will hit us or uh, you know am i seeing apocalypse because i saw Lehman? No, I mean, if you look at the way in which the negative yields have come about, the negative yields have come about because of, uh, you know, the ECB, um, Bank of Sweden, uh, BOJ, both trying to push inflation back up. Uh, and I think uh, if you look at the actual, you know, 10-year rates across the globe, uh, the yields are down, but they are they're not negative, negative. Right. Um, and there is, and in the bond market, there is, bonds are actually significantly over, one would say overvalued given the fundamentals. You know, the 10-year rate has moved up, but it's still 170 uh, in the U.S. 10-year rate. Uh, but I think that only goes to show the lack of risk-free asset globally okay. and the excess demand for risk-free asset uh, more than saying that this is a sign that the uh, two markets are uh, sort of, you know, showing you different science. The equity market is looking at a medium term, uh, two year, three year horizon, and I think the bond market is looking at uh, cyclical the same with a very large excessive demand for... So major dislocations is not your base case? Major look in not base case. I mean, look, look, look around globally. I mean, you have till you know a few days back, you had ECB easing, BOJ easing, Bank of England easing, <laughs> FOMC probably doing a rate hike of 25 basis points in December. Uh, I think if you're focusing only on FOMC, then you get the very wrong picture. I mean, look at the other uh, G4 central banks. All of them are at least in an easing mode even now. And what about our own central bank? How much can they ease, you think? It depends, you know, how we look at the next three, four months of inflation. If these inflation prints are seen as a signal that 12 months down the road or 18 months down the road when the 4% target comes into play, it's a signal that that 4% target will be easily achieved. I think the uh, newly formed MPC or even the uh, governor will probably you know, ease rates. If they look at it and see through it and say this is a temporary factor and that this does not really affect the 12 month, 18 month down the road uh, inflation rate for which they are now accountable mm. uh, rather than just having I mean, that. Are you doubting one cut? I'm, I'm saying that that would depend upon whether 12, 18 months down the road does the same. We have a rate cut uh, for, for December, mm -hmm. uh, but anything more than that will depend on that, on that call. Okay. okay, and finally, growth. Is the growth story uh, uh, looking better for FI17 and 18 than it did in FI16? I mean, we still have growth more or less holding up at this level. Uh, I think the terms of positive terms of trade shock that India benefited from this massive decline in oil prices obviously is going to fade away. Uh, again, you know, the exports, export numbers or the global trade numbers isn't showing in real promise. So it's down to uh, what uh, Kalpana was saying. Does the rural economy turn around and do we get enough amount of domestic demand uh, to get the economy going above uh, where current rates are? All right, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, I, knew, I know that you're in the midst of a busy conference, but uh, thereafter, I'll get more detailed views from you. Thank you very much, Kalpana and Jahangir, for joining me. Back to you, Sonia.